So our session today is the second in a series of six. The session today is focused on getting started with Sakai. By the end of this session, you should be able to identify the range of digital skills needed to carry out your online TA responsibilities. You should be able to create and manage a course or project site using Sakai templates. You'll be able to describe commonly used Sakai teaching tools. You'll be able to enable and use Zoom within Sakai. Uh, you'll explore Sakai communication tools. And as we talk with each other, you'll engage in conversation with a growing online, t online TA community. Sophia? Great, um, thank you. So within your role as an online uh, teaching assistant, there are a number of ways that you will use Sakai and, and Zoom, but we'll focus on Sakai um, during this workshop for communication purposes. Communicating is a really important part of your role in working with students. So you're going to moderate online discussions using tools like the forums in Sakai. You'll also use the announcements tool in Sakai to uh, manage class communications to send out announcements to the students. You're going to hold virtual office hours and you uh, may be scheduling those using Zoom in Sakai. An important part of your role is supporting students overall, providing that inclusive climate for learning, and that does include facilitating inclusive online discussions. You'll provide feedback and great assignments, and Sakai has a number of tools that are uh, really robust tools for you to be able to do that. As well, you'll provide instruction and examples, and you might use uh, tools in Zoom, like screen share, the whiteboard feature, um, and or record Zoom videos, and those could be available in the Sakai site, and Anderson will talk a bit more about that. I'd also like to point out the Sakai guide and documentation link you see right at the very bottom with the red arrow. Um, this is a really extensive Sakai documentation guide. There's a search uh, bar there and you can simply search the, uh, the terms or tools that you're looking for and you get a lot of help uh, as well as, you know, screenshots showing how to actually do these, uh, do these things in Sakai. So let me just highlight for you uh, a new set of templates that Learning Innovation has developed, which will really make your work in uh, designing a course site helpful and facilitate that process for you. So we have developed a set of templates. There is a basic template and advanced templates. And I wanted to mention this before I go into creating your course site because you will need to add those templates at the time you are creating your site. So keeping in mind, we have these templates available. If you're going to create a new course site, you would do that under Worksite Setup. You would select Worksite Setup, and then you'll see on the left-hand side, um, create a new site. There's also a way to get to the Create New Site feature directly from that Sites button, which is to the left of my profile picture there. It's that little um, kind of waffle looking tool. So there are two ways you can create your new course site. Now about those templates, when you create the site, you would select um, either a default template or um, of course some of the schools have specific templates. So please um, note that this would be um, dependent on the department and, and school that you're in. But for general use, we have a minimal course template and then we have an advanced course template. You need to add these templates at the time you're creating your site. The advanced course template that I'll show you um, quick briefly includes pre-designed lessons. So that saves you time on actually using the lessons tool in Sakai. We do have uh, videos on how to access these templates and how to use them in your design. And I will share those at the end of the session in a follow-up email. But I wanted you to take a quick look at what an advanced template would look like in Sakai because this one is um, often requested by faculty and uh, graduate TAs and you'll notice on the left hand side the lessons tool has been enabled as well as commonly used tools in, in your course site. You also have a banner there that you could use or you could simply um, Use, that, use this as a placeholder and attach a banner that's appropriate for your course. There's the getting started area that, you know, has placeholders for information and, of course, all of the tools on the left-hand side. Now, you can go into the toolbar in Sakai and Anderson will 
show you how to do this and add additional tools. But these are some of the most commonly uh, used tools. Just to break it down a bit further, taking a look at the advanced template, you'll see that from the lessons tool, every week has been designed for you. You'll go in and add your learning outcomes, link to resources, add your learning activities. But it is a really a time saver to have a lesson template uh, built out for you that you could integrate into your course site. So this is new. There are some videos that will explain how to use these and you can definitely get a head start as you're working on courses um, for the coming spring. Thank you. So let me take you through some commonly used Sakai teaching tools and we'll start with resources. So you're looking at, um, this would be on your Sakai site on the left side of the page and it would show you all the tools that you have enabled. And we're going to take you through resources because this is the place you'll want to upload most things so that it will integrate seamlessly with your Sakai lesson site. Okay, so what you're looking at is an example that I've uploaded at scanned chapters. And these are, <clears throat> as you can see, in the resources folder. And next slide, please. Okay, so then from there, that was the resources folder. This is now in the lessons folder. So this would be what the students would see and how they're interacting with the course. So you'll see I have the date, Friday, May 15th. Uh, then similar to what you've just seen on the template, on the upper left corner, there are the weeks already laid out and you can Although the template comes week one, week two, week three, and so on, you can rename them any way you see fit. So I decided to rename them uh, and week by week and giving the dates to avoid confusion. And then on the individual day, which is in this case, May 15th, 2020, you have learning objectives, some questions, and then the homework, which will then be the reading. There are two ways uh, that you could link the scanned chapter, which comes from your resources folder. And if you, as you see, there's one way that says Foucault chapter two abnormal PDF. When a student clicks on that, that would just open a new tab and take the student there. And then the other way is what you see uh, below, which I'll show you more of on the next slide. So this is actually embedded. So the chapter then is embedded in the screen. If the student put uh, his or her mouse over the uh, actual chapter, the pages would start scrolling and so on and so forth, and they could interact with it that way. And that's entirely up to you um, as to what you think is, is best and what looks best. And I should also note that the examples I'm showing you are of a scanned chapter, but you could do the same thing for video. So you could link an actual uh, thing, something that just says, see video here, link, or you could embed the video. One thing uh, that you'll need to remember, because Duke has paid for a special Zoom subscription, you get lots of benefits, uh, bells and whistles, like polling, um, and these things cannot be done in a personal Zoom account, unless of course you want to pay the subscription. But because of that, that means there are two uh, ways that you'll interact with Zoom. So on the right side, you see that this is duke.zoom.us. And that is separate to your Sakai page, but the two overlap. So if you want something enabled, like polling, you have to go to duke.zoom.us. You have to make sure it's enabled in that account. And the settings list is very long because again, the subscription paid covers uh, all or most, if not all the bells and whistles that Zoom offers. And then uh, the other way is the Zoom meetings button, which is on your Sakai site. So what we're encouraging you to do is to make sure all your options are enabled on your duke.zoom.us account. But then when you're scheduling, 
uh, to schedule your meetings in the Sakai side because that is what all the students will have access to. So create a link in the Sakai site, uh, but then just make sure all your settings, the settings that you want to have are enabled on the other site. Okay, so this is now in the Sakai site. I'm not on duke.zoom.us, I'm in a Sakai site. And we're going to make sure that Zoom, the Zoom tool is enabled. So what would you do? Well, if you look on the left side, there is a red arrow and it's pointing to site info. So that's click on that little wheel and then that would take you to the screen you see in, in front of you. And you would go to the manage tools uh, section, which is where the other arrow is. Then you would, this is after scrolling down because there's lots of different options in Sakai as well. So you'd scroll down and uh, you'd make sure you'd look for Zoom meetings. You would click that, you'd click continue. Okay, um, there's another thing and we're showing you here because it's slightly counterintuitive. Um, on the tool order button, um, it also gives you the additional option um, not just to order tools, but to um, hide certain tools for others. And you might want to hide the resources folder for some. So um, a lot of times some faculty have uploaded their materials to the resources folder, but then if you leave it open for students to see, sometimes they might get confused and think that that's part of the class and they might end up going in there. The easiest way to avoid that is to just simply hide it uh, from the student. And it's not in managed tools, it's actually under tool order. So it's slightly counterintuitive. That's why we're flagging this now. So you would just go into tool order, click on that wheel under resources, and this works for any other tool you wanna hide as well. And you would just select the second option down there where it says make tool invisible to students and the icon is an eye with a slash through it, indicating that it's hidden. Okay, and so now, how would you schedule a Zoom meeting? Um, so your tool has been enabled um, because we, we've done that under managed tools. It would now pop up on the left side. So you see that in blue where it says Zoom meetings. And then uh, you would click on that and then you would go to schedule a new meeting and then proceed. Okay, and after the meeting, uh, this would be, you have the meeting, students find it easily because it's in the Sakai site. They click on it same way you just did to create the meeting. There's a link, it would say join, they would join it. And like we're doing today, they would you would start recording um, after the lesson is over, give it uh, a few minutes for the uh, recording to upload to the cloud. And you should get an email um, if you choose that option and it'll let you know the, cl the cloud recording has been uploaded. And this is where you can find it and other students will find it. You just simply click on Zoom meetings again and look for the button that says cloud recordings. <laughs> So here in part four, we're gonna talk about engaging students with communication tools, including Sakai forums, announcements, and email tools. Uh, next slide. So first, before we get into the idea of communication and talking about the more technical side, I have general advice to all online TAs or instructor of records about establishing boundaries and office hours, especially now that we have a lot of hybrid learning of in-person and online, or classes that are purely online and to be able to establish a set of rules of when you are expected to communicate uh, please choose do not disturb or no response hours and communicate them to your students i know in my own personal experience when i was instructor of record or a ta especially during uh, midterms or final periods or paper deadlines i always would receive the panicky one or two a.m emails from students and maybe that's okay for you as a TA, 
uh, to answer anywhere from five to two dozen panicked uh, emails about deadlines and formatting questions and things like that. Or maybe you want to establish and say that anything after 7 or 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., I'm in bed, I will not be able to answer any earlier than 6 or 7 in the morning at the earliest or until I start work the next day. And that way allows students to figure out how long should they be waiting for a response, especially with those all-nighters that we all remember from our own undergraduate days. The next thing I would like to remind, remind everyone is repetition is key. And this is where communication through Sakai really helps and benefits students. Um, it's great to remind students of assignments and tasks through different modes of communication. Uh, repetition in, as a pedagogical sense, is great to reinforce ideas. It's also a great way to reinforce protocol. And then finally, be consistent with the communication channels and your response rate. Just like you might not always be able to grade an assignment within the first, next day, you might not always be able to answer every single email or answer any questions about that paper or problem sets within 24 hours. Sometimes a problem may arise and might be a couple more days. Establish a communication allowance for you and your students saying um, anything that's non-essential I will answer in about 40 to 72 hours and something more of the urgent of more urgency a bit sooner and that will allow you to have the expectations to be communicated early on. Next slide, please. And there's also another great way that now that Zoom and this hybrid learning and online learning and flexible teaching has brought us, for those of us who aren't as familiar with online forums and discussions, here in Sakai, this is a great asynchronous discussion area. It's useful for icebreakers and inviting conversations. Uh, forums are group aware for team discussions. So if you, the professor, want to make sure you don't have students emailing you between the hours of 9 p.m. or 8.30, 8 a.m., this is a great way for students to be able to collaborate, work together, and connect with one another, and maybe problem solve different problem sets. And it forms a sense of community while also reinforcing the material that you lectured or taught the previous day. Uh, there's different form setting options and we'll see some more demonstrations of that that include requiring someone to read the material before posting. You can specify form availability dates. You can link it to the grade book and conclude this as your participation grade. That's now no longer, how do I, uh, how do I grade attendance? You're now grading active participation instead. And you can also upload attachments, audio and video to these forums for students to engage with, discuss and comment on. Next slide. So if we're going to find this in Sakai forums, these Sakai forums, you always have to go back to the toolbar. And your toolbar may differ depending on what different tools and applications you might have included in whether with what template you've chosen and what have you done to customize it for your own course. But generally, it will be on your toolbar page. If enabled, it made it visible, it made visible. And here we have it cycled in, circled in red. So you click on that. And when you click on that, you get to the next page. Creating a new form on Sakai is one of your options. On this page, you have the choice to organize forums, choose a new forum, change settings, and the grading and statistics option for these forums. And if you have multiple forms already, you will have a list, including a general discussion and any other customized forms you may have started. And they will all be listed on this page. However, if you're gonna start a new one, you have to click on the tab on that top left-hand corner there, uh, point about by the, with the red arrow and circled in red. When you click that, you get to the next page. And this is a very similar format for all communications, whether it's email announcements or forums or creating a new discussion topic. And here in the forum settings, very familiar, very much like email. You have the forum title to post. You have a short description, which is not going to, which is going to be what is shown underneath the title on that first page we had shown previously. And that allows you to give the students an idea of what the form is before clicking on it. And then 
once they click on the forum, they have a detailed description, which is what is below, where you may supply instructions and maybe some additional uh, question prompts and attachments for the students to engage, discuss, or solve. Next question. Next slide. When you scroll down from inputting your text for short description and detailed and title, you go down to the next uh, lower in the page. Next slide. And you have the option to include the attachment here. You also have some very handy features, including locking the forum, which allows you to keep track of no one else able to contribute to the forum posting after you've closed. This is great in order to save the forum for future maybe study reference for midterms and finals. You are able to moderate the topics in the forum. That means you can say yes or no to what's being posted. You could also require users to read the other posts before up to post before reading the other students answers or discussions, which is really great for homework problem sets where you want to make sure students are not copying someone else's answers. You this is Hugh, Hugh again. I'd like to chime in and mention that last feature that Dayton was describing, require users to post before reading. This gets around an issue that's happened in classes I've taught where students who post late, later than other students say, well, everyone's already said everything, so I don't really have anything to add to this conversation, but I want to make sure that I, I posted this because it's a required part of class to post to the forum, which doesn't move the ball forward at all for us. This means that everyone has to post something original without having to react initially to what has been posted already. Um, no, that's that's a great point. It's, it also gets the pressure off of students to be able to share their their thoughts and not have to worry about breaking any honor codes. So we also have the option, back one slide please. We also here can also, if you want to schedule a form to be released later under the availability column, you're able to uh, choose between showing immediately or choosing to be shown or hid after a certain amount of time. Next slide. Uh, another handy feature when it comes to forums is specifying a gradebook, uh, it as a gradebook item. And this will allow you to grade either as a check mark or points or a letter grade in the Sakai forum. In order for you to have this option, you have to have your gradebook uh, filled out ahead of time to create those categories. And then once you are able to, uh, able to connect with your gradebook item with the forum. And then this forum will automatically approve your gradebook and you're able to grade right in there so students can receive credit. Uh, but a really important thing to know about this is that in order for the TA to do this, the TA must have instructor role in Sakai. They cannot be a contributor or a participant um, or an access level of Sakai, they need to actually have the instructor role. And yes, you can have two people uh, listed as an instructor role. You have multiple people in the instructor role. So your TAs and the instructor, head instructor or professor should definitely all have the instructor role if you plan on having your TA uh, managing the forums like this. Next slide. Uh, in regards to making sure that uh, the question of access this is the most updated version of granting permission of who can do what in Sakai. You have three main roles. You have visitor, access, and maintain. Maintain is typically the permission level of the owner. A visitor is a reviewer, so your students typically would be listed as visitors, which means they cannot edit the site, which is a good thing. And then you have access, which the permission level is that of a contributor. And to the right of that uh, highlighted button and drop down link, you have the option to customize of what exactly can you contribute. And when you click that button there of customize, you get additional drop down menu that lists the different areas that that contributor can edit and change in the site, including marking forms as read, uh, new conversations and replying. This is very important for all forums. Uh, if, you're, if you have a TA that you don't feel comfortable in charge of the gradebook, but you want them to be able to manage it and report back to you as the instructor. 
And of course, please don't forget to save. If this is a lot of work to set up a forum, do not save it and have it posted. Next slide. So now you've created the forum. Have you created a discussion yet? The answer, no. The forum is a general area where your students can talk and you're creating a category of a forum. And they can range from homework assignments to uh, reviewing questions for a test or to troubleshooting problems with different aspects of a lesson. Well, a forum allows you to create those sections, the subdivisions within a whole discussion area. You have now a new topic within that forum. So a forum is like, the, if you're going to view it as like a, li a, a library on your computer with folders, forum is the larger type of uh, organization. And then the topic is going to fit within that. So here from our site, we have an example of the forums. And I created a forum called Introduce Yourself. We wanted to keep that away from the general online TA skills forum and general discussion there at the bottom. And we have the option to create a new topic in either forum. And if I wanted to create a new topic in the uh, introduce yourself forum to introduce myself as one of the facilitators of these workshops, I would create a new topic probably saying introducing myself. Uh, my name is this and then posting and asking anyone else who may be in music or in the humanities to reach out to me. Well, Anderson might reach out and say, everyone in the social sciences, please reach out to him. So this is a place where you're gonna create your topics and your students are actually gonna be engaging with the topics within that forum. And the forum is gonna tell you what specifically you're looking for with that. And it's helpful again for organizing the difference from homework assignments to review questions to maybe needing additional help from a TA. Next slide. When you click that, it's the same uh, layout as your forums. You have a title, short description, and long description, but there's a major difference in the options when it comes to creating a topic versus a forum. And in the forums, remember, we had the first three options here listed, locking the topic, you have a chance to moderate it, and a chance to uh, post before, require users to post before reading others' answers. But now you have a fourth option when it comes to topics, and that is allowing people to post their answers anonymously. But identities will be revealed to those with, um, who identify themselves as the owner and only the owner with those with owner permissions can view the identities by default. And important to know that this setting can't be changed after topic creation. This is great if you have students who want to engage, but maybe your shyer students are afraid of having the wrong answer and you want them to be able to share and not feel uh, judged with their peers if they get an answer wrong and you want to encourage and facilitate discussion. This is a great option that you don't have to um, worry about A, uh, discouraging students who might want to answer anonymously, and B, you still have the security of knowing who participated in the forum for both credit as well as any additional snafus that might happen. Next slide. Another important aspect with topics is of course the availability like before, but now also the idea of notification. And if you have a larger class, we would probably not recommend you to receive email notifications for each new posting or new message because that will become a lot of information very quickly and your email can be very much inundated by, uh, by, all, these, by all the participation from your students, especially in those larger class sizes. Um, I would recommend having student, having you uh, not receiving email notifications for your topic postings because it can come, become very unwieldy. Next slide. Finally, we have uh, Sakai announcements. We've now moved on from general repetition and repeating information you might have assigned in class or any upcoming events that might introduce students to new ideas or reinforce your subject. Uh, here, uh, much like forums and topics, similar format, 
the left, you will find the uh, announcements tool. Again, to be different based on what tools you have available on your Sakai site and you've enabled. You go to the add function and you're able to post an announcement. And when you post these announcements, they, you have a really two important things to remember with the next slide. Before you publish, make sure you check on the access of this announcement. You have two options of either only members of the site can see this announcement or it's publicly viewable by everyone. Of course, if you're having a Sakai site for just your students, you probably only want members of the site to see this announcement. And the availability. If this is a lower level announcement, you might not you might not care about necessarily being shown on a specific day or immediately. And if you want to show immediately, that's great, but you also have the chance to uh, have it later. For example, a guest speaker's coming to campus and is related to, for us in music, if someone from another university is coming to speak about their musical topic, and we want students to listen to that composer and his music or her music, maybe we would, would want to hold the announcement till a day or two before. So specifying dates is really important. So the next one I was hoping to focus in on the next slide is the idea of not everyone may receive these announcements depending on this particular option. Many students do not opt into announcements and just because you give an announcement on the page does not mean a student's going to be readily checking their Sakai site for any updates. Quite often, they opt out of email so that they can lower the amount of emails that come into their own email addresses, email accounts. So here, if you have an important announcement, you want students to know of an assignment or remind them about what to expect for next class or what is expected for next class, please put it on high priority for all participants because when you do so, you are able to make sure that each student gets it into the email because students will check your emails. They might not be checking the actual Sakai site because by default, no email notification is sent and it'll just live on the Sakai site and students will not have received this important announcement in regards to what you took the time to an effort to let students know about. Uh, next slide. Now, finally, with this last slide for communication, we have Sakai email tools. This is a great tool to be able to email the whole class and not having the uh, difficulty of putting each individual student's email into your own personal Outlook page. And here you, have, you can choose who specifically you want to email. You can choose roles. So you have the choice to just email your TAs through this one, this one tool or you can email the whole section or whole class or different subgroups of your uh, class. And much like an email, you have the option to designate to who, the subject, and the uh, main body of the email. The important thing to note though, uh, make sure your students are aware that they reply to this mass email uh, through their own personal email accounts. They will not be able to send it to the professor and they will not have any notice that that email was never seen by you, the instructor, or the TA. They have to email you at your personal Duke email account. 